Once explored by George Washington, site of West Virginia's last public hanging, and once home to one of the world's largest aluminum smelters. I'm Wayne Worth, and you're watching On the Road in West Virginia, R55 Counties, Jackson County. Long before the county was officially created, and even before George Washington surveyed this vast territory along the mighty Ohio, it has been claimed that an early French explorer named LaSalle floated down the river along what we call Jackson County today. Now you have to remember this was the 1600s in Western Virginia, which was an unsettled frontier, so many claims were not well documented, and in the case of LaSalle's adventures down the mighty Ohio, was not substantiated. By 1749, though, another Frenchman named Saleron Blanville would lay claim to the Ohio Valley region as French territory. Now, one would call Celeron and his party America's first heavy metal group, and it wasn't because they could play a mean electric guitar, but because they would bury lead plates along the banks of the Ohio River deeming the land French territory. Of course, France's claim to this part of the region was very short-lived with the British winning the French and Indian War, but this part of the Ohio Valley would also spark the interest of a young 38-year-old George Washington. Surveying land since the age of 16, George Washington and his party, which consisted of him, a surveyor named Captain William Crawford, a doctor, and some friendly Native Americans, explored much of the Ohio Valley region of Jackson County. He liked this area so much that he had William Crawford survey about 2,500 acres of it. However, the first permanent settlement would not occur until around 1796 when three Revolutionary War veterans would make this place their home. Now, the establishment of Ripley in 1832 and Ravenswood in 1852 would bring more people into Jackson County as agriculture would become a centerpiece of the county's early economy. However, it would also start a rivalry between the two towns and the location of its county seat. Ripley, which was named after Harry Ripley, who by the way was a local circuit-riding Methodist minister who drowned in Mill Creek on his way to marry his soon-to-be wife, was located in the center of Jackson County, and Ravenswood was located along the Ohio River. Now, of course, the folks in Ravenswood lobbied to have the county seat located there since it was the largest populated town in the county. On the other side of the fence was Ripley in the southern end of the county who lobbied for a more central location due to Ravenswood being too far to travel. In the end, it all boiled down to money since the county was responsible for financing the construction of a courthouse and a jail. Now, of course, the good folks in Jackson County at that time didn't want to pay for the construction of a courthouse in a location they couldn't agree on. So a good dude named Jacob Starcher stepped up and donated eight acres of his own land in downtown Ripley to the county, devoting two of those acres in constructing the courthouse and jail and the other six acres for the county to sell to finance the project. Now, one would think that this would settle the dispute of the location of the county seat. However, it would take a referendum in 1886 confirming Ripley as the county seat before this issue would finally be put to rest. The 1860s would bring more deadlier disputes as the Civil War would bring some rather unique action to Jackson County and the Mid-Ohio Valley region. Just north of Ravenswood was the Battle of Buffington Island, which would be the only naval engagement in West Virginia throughout the Civil War. Now, it all started when Confederate General John Hunt Morgan and his forces raided through Indiana and Ohio and approached the island as a pathway into West Virginia. However, the weather didn't cooperate, and on July 19, 1863, they were overtaken by Union troops and U.S. Navy gunboats. As a result, Morgan's men became scattered and started running and swimming for their lives. In the end, it didn't fare too well for Morgan and his Confederate forces, as 50 of them were killed and over 700 were captured. Just down the road of Peace in Ripley, another interesting raid took place in 1861 as the Moxon Rangers, who were mainly Confederate bushwhackers, captured and pillaged the town, which included a local post office. Now, looting the post office was a major federal offense, and later after leaving town, the Union forces caught up with this bunch and promptly arrested and imprisoned their leader, Daniel Dusky. In the end, the Confederate government admired Dusky so much that they worked at a prison exchange deal with the Union, which, by the way, was authorized by Abe Lincoln. The post-Civil War era brought significant changes to Jackson County as the coming of the railroad would open up much of the county to interstate commerce. The coming of the B&O Railroad's Ohio River short line to Ravenswood and the construction of both the B&O's Ravenswood Spencer and Glenville branch and the Ripley to Millwood branch during the 1880s would accelerate the agriculture industry in Jackson County. 
farmers now could get their livestock to bigger markets and by the 1920s and 30s Ravenswood would also progress into a manufacturing hub for barrels, brooms, pottery, and even marbles. Now our state's justice system would also see reforms towards the dawn of the 20th century when on December 16, 1897, Ripley would become the very site of the last public hanging in West Virginia. The 1950s would bring change to Jackson County's economy for the next half century as this region would see an economic boom never experienced before in its history. The year was 1954 and the Kaiser Aluminum and Chemical Corporation decided to set up shop just south of Ravenswood and when I say set up shop, I mean build one of the world's largest aluminum smelting and processing plants. To put this into perspective, Ravenswood went from a population of around 1,200 prior to the building of the Kaiser Aluminum plant to around 4,200 16 years after the plant was built. Of course, this created a major housing shortage in the town and what was once vast farmland became North Ravenswood with the building of homes and businesses to address the needs of workers who migrated from different areas of the country. Heck, even Henry Kaiser himself built an elementary school in the town to provide the basic educational needs for the growing population. Now, for over 40 years, Kaiser Aluminum brought growth and prosperity to the county. However, by 1988, Kaiser sold the plant to Ravenswood Aluminum and with globalization of the world's economy during the 1980s, the new owners would cut corners, especially when it came to safety. Now this prompted the United Steel workers to negotiate a new contract with workplace health and safety being a top priority. The company went and budged though and as a result, on October 31st, 1990, union workers were turned away by supervisors upon reporting to work. For the next 20 months, the Union steel workers and the company would engage in a bitter labor dispute which would gain a lot of national attention. Even after an agreement was reached and Union workers were allowed to report back to work, the aluminum industry took a big hit due to outsourcing and rising utility rates. By 2009, the plant shut down and by 2015, it was announced that the plant would never reopen again. Today, the Constellium Rolling Mill is still in full operation and is Jackson County's top employer. Even with the permanent closing of the aluminum plant, Jackson County continues to make the best of the opportunities that come their way. And one major opportunity that has literally rolled into Jackson County was Interstate 77. Built in the 1960s and 70s, I-77 not only directly connected the county to Parkersburg and Charleston, which has helped sustain border communities such as Kenna, but has also provided visitors to the region better access to one of the county's best kept treasures. Originally a leadership training facility for students in 1949, Cedar Lakes has evolved into a conference center and a local recreational park. It is also home to the annual Mountain State Arts and Crafts Fair, which is West Virginia's largest outdoor craft event. Now Cedar Lakes attracts over 500,000 visitors every year, but still goes back to its roots and promotes leadership training opportunities for our state's youth. Which finally brings us here to Ripley, home to the largest small town 4th of July celebration in America. And they know that it's home to the largest small town 4th of July celebration in America because they say it is. I'm Wayne Worth, and until next time, always remember, what we value and hold important to our lives today came from events that happened yesterday. And it's when we begin to understand the events of yesterday that we fully embrace today, which makes tomorrow become less of a mystery.